So the question is, is Edward Snowden a hero or is he a traitor? Joining us now to consider that, Dr. Ben Carson. He, of course, is the former director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Dr. Carson, thanks a lot for joining us. So give us the moral context for this. How should we regard Edward Snowden? Well, I'm not sure that it's necessary for us to uh, actually put any labels on him. Uh, but what we should be looking at is what can we learn from this situation. There are probably other people uh, who are in sensitive positions who perhaps have information that would be useful uh, for the American people to know. But you have to understand that there is a proper way in order to, uh, to disseminate that information, and this was not done in the proper way. So, you know, we shouldn't so much concentrate on him as making uh, uh, information available to other people who may have important information for us. You know, it's, it is absolutely important that we know what's being done and what's being monitored. Um, because people act differently, they say things differently when they know that they're being monitored. That's why when you go into a store, there's a sign up that says you are being videoed. Uh, and, th you know, the secrecy that is going on right now, uh, coupled with the apparent uh, dishonesty in government, uh, obviously has, has dampened the enthusiasm for people about, you know, the veracity of their government. But don't the two go hand in hand? Doesn't secrecy inevitably lead to dishonesty in the same way that power inevitably corrupts. If what you're doing is cloaked from public view, it's much more likely um, to be wrong, is it not? Uh, of course it is. It's one of the very things that they, the founders were afraid of and talked about, you know, that the government would get progressively bigger and bigger. You know, basically the government has gotten to the point now where it's like a morbidly obese person. Sometimes we hear these stories about these 1,400-pound people who can't do anything except eat. Well, you know, basically that's how our government has gotten, and it needs all of these calories all the time, basically our money. And uh, if, if we were to starve it a little bit uh, and get it down to a reasonable size, it would be much fitter, much more agile, and much more effective. So to continue the metaphor, w bariatric surgery, that's what the government needs, would you say? <laughs> or Richard Simmons to show up and, you know, cut down a wall and have, you know, the, the patient moved out on a... Uh, on, on some sort of earth moving equipment or, or what do we do? Well, I, I certainly think that uh, a gradual decrease in the calories would be uh, extremely effective and, uh, and, and we need to do it. You know, the sequestration has demonstrated that. You know, we, we, we cut back on the money even though certain people try to make it as painful as possible. It actually is having an ameliorating effect on the economy and that should be a lesson to us. That is uh, an, an often not remarked upon phenomenon, and I appreciate your bringing it up. And by the way, doctor, congratulations for our viewers who don't know. Dr. Corson just completed his final surgery uh, after, I think, about 17,000 surgeries over the course of your career, which is amazing. Thank you for, for Thank that. Thank you. It's wonderful.